good afternoon, fellas. Frankie Day here for Frankie Day Models. Okay, guys, I have, have for you for this delightful Saturday afternoon, video number three, for my George Washburn tow tug of 1890 up to 1931. Okay. Thus taken from the last video, I had the hole all spotted out using my filler of choice using Bondo at the wet sand hole hall I gave a final priming then when the priming's dried I went ahead and started on the rub rails so I got all the rub rails on and uh, when those rub rails are on I gave them a prime so the next step right now I have to do before I do anything else on this model which is going to be really fast after I get this done this is a very important procedure for me it is it also makes a more sounder boat. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and put resin. I'm going to go ahead and put a brush of coated resin inside the hull. And then, well, like I said before, I'm going to paint it with my special machinery deck gray paint I got. Because I want to get that all done before I start planking the deck. Because once those two methods are all done, this thing is going to go, this is going to be like Hugh Danny. Magic. It'll go together very quick, very quick. And, uh, most all the parts of this kit are all prefab anyway. It's all just a matter of building it. All laser cut parts makes life very sweet. And, uh, so like I said before I do anything on this boat, I'm going to make sure those two procedures are done done with. Then I go ahead and plank the deck, stain same, add the shears inside the bulwarks, cap rails, block bit mounts, and uh, a lot of pieces. And uh, it'll be done before you know it. I should have seen coming next week sometime. So the whole hull is completely finished. It's all been fiberglass. This thing is tough. I could take this thing. It's been dropped. I accidentally dropped this last night when I was uh, running down with wet and dry sandpaper using water. And it slipped out of my <laughs> hands. Oh shit. Bam. It just bounced once. That was it. Fiberglass is very strong. Highly recommended on these wooden uh, 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 reef control boats. It's a lot better, guys. A lot of guys just go ahead and put resin on there. Now, resin works very, very well, too. It does. But glass is better because, you know, you got two different protections on that wood. you got glass reinforced with more resin on it and sand and filler and stuff. Ain't no way water is going to enter this boat. I can tell you that. <clears throat> this thing's going to be unsinkable. Okay. I got some stills behind me. I shot some stills during the construction process as far as it is right now behind me. And as uh, so like I say for now one of my videos I'm going to start making pictures of the stills which gives it spice. It works for me and uh, like I say I can take Panzerman Bill's bunker for this you know for learning off, off his video what he does. He, he loads everything up on his computer and discusses the assembly phrases and, and it's nots and buts and what happened here and there and and he finishes up with the boys uh, there's two beautiful looking English bulls he has oh boy I'd love to have a couple of them right now <laughs> them dogs are darlings they're very beautiful dogs okay <clears throat> before we uh, get to the stills I've been um, I'm doing some cleanup back here I got my shop out in the back of my garage out there. That's where I'm going to start building my big rig control ships and airplanes back there. So I got, I, had, I got everything all cleaned up out there. All ship shape scored away. Admiral inspection will probably not pass, but for listed man, it'll pass very, very well. And uh, I, don't, I never tend to be a white glove inspection in there. It's going to be nothing but dust and wood and everything else. So. I got all my rig control airplanes out there. I've been working pretty much last night when I got off work and kind of hauling stuff out there, hanging stuff up in the overhead. So I'll be posting some videos of some builds I'm doing out there, guys, during the winter time. And uh, we'll have a little show and tell back there, too. So, oh, I, I, oh Frankie Day's got a lot of good things shaking your way. I'm always thinking all the time. I'm a little slow, but I think. Okay, since I'm thinking right now, let's think about uh, take a look at this. Uh, this time, the captions of the stills. I will discuss what I've done, and we'll take a, a peekaboo of the George Washburn behind me. 
Okay, guys, stay focused, fellas. Here we go. Here we go, guys. Okay. After this hole was all spotted out, I shot a coat of primer on it. <coughs> Excuse me. I saw a couple of blemishes right there, so I took a squeegee and scrubbed it this way to fill in the lows and the highs right there. Even around the, uh, the straight of the keel as it goes around. This out of quarter inch PVC plastic by one fourth by one eighth. It wraps around, this is your false keel they get to post me on this tug, which works very, very well and very, very effective once you add the rubbing strings. Okay, gentlemen, once this, uh, once this keel was, uh, was laid, I did some filling around here, and I found a couple bunches right there by using light, and everything else is pretty well smooth as you can see right here. And, uh, so, after this caption here, I started adding the strakes. I think I sanded, did some sanding right there. Next deal. Okay, I took the stuff off. That's it on the port side that you've seen on the last, uh, on, the, on the last, uh, still. I sanded this off here. It's all flush. Keels that on real good. The rudder fits the top of here. The rudder post, the bottom of the rudder post fits here, so you got to drill a hole here. It goes right down there where your rudder fits at. Of course, this is your stuffing box where you screw the propeller. I got the rubbing straight here, wrapped around and clamped. That's right here. It's called clamp. And uh, as you can see, the whole hull is really smooth. That fiberglass does the job. It's very, very slow and time consuming, guys. But when you're dealing with something like this, it goes to the water. This thing's got to have watertight integrity all throughout the ship. I mean, brushing a coat of resin on this thing or putting some kind of a filler to cover the pores and paint, you can't allow all that to stop water because there's a way the water will find its way. If there's a hole in that hole somewhere, that water will find its way. The only way you find out where it's at is it'll, it'll exit exactly the way it entered. When you take it out of the water, if it is taken in water. This boat will not take in water at all. It is wrapped with two ounce fiberglass all around. All around, this whole thing is beating fiberglass. They have to cut it in sections. When you lay your fiberglass, a lot of guys brush on the, the resin. That's the wrong way of doing it because you put your fiberglass on there. you got no way to work with it. So it's best to lay it dry. Which do you lay your fiberglass across through what I've done. I should have done it with my... Uh, I should have explained this uh, pictorially instead of verbally when I had the time I was doing it. So you lay your fiberglass across there. You mix your fiberglass up. You put a big old pile right there of resin and you work your resin this way, the middle inside out. And when it's all done, just go back over it and brush it on. Very simple procedure. So anyway, she's uh, keel up, turn turtle, and this is the keel. That's where I put the filler in there. And uh, is your rubbing straight? Next deal, please. A little closer. I gotta fill in more there. I gotta sand all this out, which I've done already. It's all gotta be sanded and primed. It's got I want all this to look just like this, nice and smooth. Same thing applies aft. I got more sanding around here to do. I can see these things and I just sand it out. This is during construction, this way it's rough. And then you gotta finish that as you go along. This is the stern. This is a very, very tight bend around here. I had to apply a heat gun just to soften that plastic, a PVC, just to wrap, so I can wrap it around. I use five minute epoxy to attach these rails. I don't use the ACC glue. I don't like using that ACC glue. It's okay, guys, but it's, it's a hurry up type of glue. And it's very dangerous glue. And it's a very good glue. But old school method best is using, especially on these, it was always used tight bond water-based glues and epoxies. That's the best thing to use on these old, these, old, these, uh, these wooden ships. 
wind uh, tugboats and the like. Okay, next hill. Let's see what's shaking over here. All right, I got all the rub rails in. We got everything in place right there. This goes on the starboard side. So I got clamps back here. As you can see, it's all wrapped around one of the knuckle that started the transom as it wraps around. Same thing the bow. I got an edge filler around there, like I told you on two slides stills ago. And sand away. Stern section, you can see how nicely and neat it goes around here. I'm always constantly spotting this out with light. I take a a real cl uh, a, a bright a bright flashlight, and uh, I always go around and, and check the highs and lows, and go back and check get it again. Clamps are in place right there. Clamps still there. This is the starboard side. We've got the starboard side all there. starboard side of the knuckle. All these got to be sanded, which I did. This here, inside the bulwarks, is going to have PVC. It's supposed to be a uh, 8 millimeter PVC that fits on the side here, which is very, very good. There she is with all the rub rails on. That's all that with the surplus plastic gave you, so I don't I dare throw this away. I say stuff like this, uh, gentlemen. It's good. It works good. You can use it for parts of your kit and everything else. So all these little bits and bobs and all these, all these with surplus pieces like I, I never throw it away. If they're small, if they're under an inch long, or inch long or under, I 86 of my shit can. I'll throw them over the side. But these here I save because you can use them. They, you'd be surprised what you can use them for, what they come up with. Okay, that's her in her character. The cabin's back on. Everything's been dry fitted on there. Rub rails are on. Now I prime. I just dry fit this. I took a heat gun and bent that 1 8 inch, 1 4th lit stale uh, PVC plastic, which is supposed to be your uh, cap rail. And, uh, That's the stern right there. It's all cleaned up, guys. They went back and cleaned this thing up. All that rough imperfections right there, it's all been cleaned up. And it still needs a little more cleaning up. There she is right there. Water line goes right across here. All black ahead. Yeah, with an ash chute right here. <clears throat> because on the, on the George Washburn tug, she had two sisters. She had the Erie and the Albany. And uh, George W. Washburn was the first before the other two sisters were were uh, were laid. Because these holes were laid simultaneously, just right after the other. And uh, these were good barge towing tugs, tow tugs. Like I said in the last video, they were never used to uh, to dock. Atlantic steamers and ocean liners and such. They didn't. Have, they they weren't designed that way to, uh, for them. They they could, but they never used them. These things were work boats. They were designed to transport barges full of uh, sand, stone, tagonite, topsoil, railroad uh, railroad cars, all the way up the Hudson River to Albany and from Albany down to the Hudson River, back to her war port she docked out of. The Cornell steam lines, they went out of business many years ago. And uh, these tugs came out very early in, in life. By, by the late 19th century, they, they envisioned and we got to have some kind of a work boat that would be able to do all these tasks. Besides building everything up, these packet river boats, and uh, so that's when the tug came in. Even years ago, during the uh, 
the 18th and 17th century. The only way to dock a to to dock a sailing ship is by have a jolly boat over the side. You got about 20 sailors. You got a hawser on your goddamn forecastle. You got these sailors here heaving too with this jolly boat to pull the ship into port. So these tugs were very, very welcomed when they came out back in the late 19th century. The George Washburn and their two sisters, the area and the Albany, they were uh, they were launched during 1890. And all coal burning boiler system these things had. All coal fire, because that was dirty. Cold, uh, coal residue from uh, smoke, you know, those type of fossil fuels, fossil fuels you use. They are very, very, uh, very dirty stuff. So the maintenance on a, a boat like this, on a tugboat like this, is, is probably 24 hours a day. Keep this thing clean. The Cornell steam lines always kept their tugs very, very immaculate order all the time because it adapted of taking on paying customers. That's why they enlarged this cabin on here, as I mentioned in a video or two ago. Generally, this ship was designed, now I found the goods on this thing. There's nothing on the internet on this tug at all. But there's other sources. I went to the library. Checked out a book. It's called Steam Tugs of the 19th Century. And had the, that's how I just now found out forgotten information that was not publicized on the internet. So guys, if you'll find stuff on the internet, nowhere, not even close, you really want to get down to the nitty gritty of it, go to a library and read the old fashioned way in books. You'd be surprised. The wealth of information has never been documented in the internet so cyberspace. So like I said, this cabin, this tug, this cabin was actually chopped off right about here. And it had one funnel. He had tow motors and tow machine and towing bits back here aft. Since the Cornell steam lines kept their tugs very, very immaculate order with a beautiful, beautiful yellow stacks. The black was kept clean. This thing was a very clean boat. As dirty as it was with coal, the sailors and the seamen aboard this here vessel kept this thing in Admiral's inspection 24 hours a day. It was very clean. So like I say, guys, once you're on it all the time, constantly, it's not that hard to keep it clean. Just neglecting it two, two three days or a week, two weeks or a month or a year, that's when it really gets nasty. But when they, yeah, a lot of paying customers always like to go up the Hudson River to upstate somewhere. <coughs> Instead of taking the Indian trails and horse and buggy roads, which took days to get where they wanted to go, they can go there in a matter of hours or even overnight. So the seaports of New York and Massachusetts, all, all coastal regions, even seaports, Wilhelmshaven and Liverpool, England, and all these seaports, they were, were ridden with tugs, ocean liners, steamers, yachts, boats, everything, because that was a transportation back in those days. There was no route system, no freeways, no nothing. They had a railway system, but they never took you to the destination you wanted to go. It took you close to where you want to go, then you had to take a horse and buggy from there and go where you want to go. Then again, that took days. So you, the sea was a very, very, very important part of transportation. It got you there quicker. Nowadays, it's all been superseded by airplanes. Okay, next uh, slide. This is in a bow view right there. I got still take a file, I'm going to file this, sir. I forgot to file that off, everything else has been clean. I'm going to file that straight so I get that shadow out of there, and I'll reprime it again. Then I'm going to remove this cabin while this video is unloaded, and I'll take care of this. And I'm going to go ahead and resin inside the hull and paint the same inside. Then that's going to be fun time. This is going to be time to start planking the deck. Right here is the, is the Hercules tug, guys. This is the tug, the, the Coast Guard tug. I wanted, to th I wanted to throw this in right here to show you guys. That Coast Guard tug, this was rich, this is what I was talking about. This is the one I had, the Hercules. I found this on eBay. I was looking around, had a picture. This is the old Hercules tug I had. 
So you can tell the boxing this thing's went to. This right here is a, the 